We call the May study session. Uh, Board of Utilities. Uh, Board of Utilities. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, I haven't forgot yet. Wow. You're your own self. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Well, try this again. Yeah. One of those boards I was on. I love it. Yeah, really. <laughs> oh, be quiet. I always want to be on that board. board of <laughs> I do not. Yeah. <laughs> and do that. Uh, Records show that everyone's here. Lena will be a few minutes late. She's on her way. So she'll be here soon. So if you would, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I'm sure I'm not going to live that one down, so... <laughs> not today. That will come back to haunt me. So, at this time, I'd like to introduce Teresa Bledsoe for some special recognition. Thank you. Great. Yes, we have uh, quite a few this evening. We have a house full of students and proud parents who are here to support them. Um, we're recognizing our Missouri Scholars Academy participants and our Missouri Fine Arts Academy participants. So we'll start first with our Missouri Scholars Academy. Our, uh, we have 15 SPS students attending. There are 330 students uh, statewide who have been selected. Uh, they were nominated by their schools to participate in this three-week program. Um, it will be held at the University of Missouri Columbia um, in June 11th through July 1st. And this gives these uh, gifted students an opportunity to um, experience unique um, educational learning experiences. So I'll start by uh, calling up our students from Central. If you are here from Central and you're a Missouri Scholars Academy, please step forward. Line up. I'll introduce you if you'll stand on either side of me. Uh, we have a few students who aren't with us, so let's start with those who are. Katie Lou is here. Hi, Katie. This is Katie. I'll hand you your certificate. Thank you. And Katie is accompanied uh, by her parents, Robert Lou and Jennifer Zai, if they'd please stand. Okay. Uh, next, we have Aiden Ziegler. Aiden is accompanied by his parents, Toby Ziegler and Tracy Corbin and his grandparents, Lynn and Tammy Corbin. Thank you. August Hulgus. He's here with his mother, Deborah Cox. Deborah, if you please stand to be recognized. Michael Lee and his mother, Jia Jin Chen. Andrew Eisenhower is our next scholar. Uh, he's here with his father, Tim Eisenhower. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And Alexander Hudson. His parents, Christian and Jessica Hudson. Thank you. And then Brian Liu is with his mother, JJ Wayne. Thank you. And then, have I missed anybody that's here from Central? We have several students who aren't present. Malia Morgan, Kate Skalicki, Asa Scott, and Brittany Oliver. So we'd like to honor these students from Central High School. We have one student from Glendale High School who's been selected as a Missouri Scholars Academy, Hannah Loader, if you come forward. Her parents, Kathy Hopper and Michael Loader, are with her this evening. And Kickapoo students, if you'd come forward, Missouri Scholars Academy, Joshua Lawson and Taylor Cobb. I believe Samantha Kohlmeyer is not with us this evening. Joshua is here with his parents, Daniel and Rebecca Lawson. Oops, wrong one. Thank you. And Taylor is here with his parents, Alex and Jill Cobb, and his brother, Timothy. Thank you. And the 
Samantha Colmeyer not here? <coughs> so that concludes our Missouri Scholars Academy recipients. Next, we have four students from Central who are participating in the Missouri Fine Arts Academy. Uh, these students apply each year with their portfolio or a video um, audition tape and are selected to participate in this three-week residential program which takes place at Missouri State University uh, during June. Uh, so I would invite Becca Davis, Emma Dawson, and Ashley Riley to come forward. <laughs> Becca Davis is here with her parents, Dennis and Diane Davis, if they please stand. Thank you. And Emma Dawson is here with her parents, Dr. Mike Dawson and Wendy Dawson, if they would please stand. <laughs> 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 and Ashley Raleigh, uh, her parents, Philip and Monica, are here to support her, along with her sister, Carrie. Thank you. So before I close, I'll just ask one more time, were there any students present that I didn't recognize that came in after? Okay. Thank you. Comments to the board? Thoughts? Congratulations, Tom. Absolutely. You represent us at our best. <laughs> and I know several students have concerts and other activities, so we will let them uh, take their leave right now. Right. Thank you. Plus, right. it gets boring from here, so. <laughs> <laughs> It's time for public comments to address agenda items. And we do have four speakers tonight. And so I would like to uh, remind that the board welcomes comments from the audience about the issues being discussed. It's recommended that requests to speak submitted prior to beginning of the meeting, which we have four. Comments will be limited to five minutes for each speaker and will be timed. You'll see it up on the screen. Uh, the, the little clock on both of them. It is inappropriate to address the board about individual students or individual staff members by name in open meeting. If you have concerns about individuals, these concerns should be addressed through the appropriate administrative supervisors, either in the schools or in the district office. So, our first speaker is Gabe Isaac. Five minutes, okay to three minutes so I'm gonna read this so I hope I don't mangle it too bad uh, my name is Gabe Isaacson and I'm president of Springfield NEA first I would like to thank the educators and community members who have come out this evening in support of PHS teachers counselors and librarians for National Teacher Appreciation Day this evening I want to speak to the efforts of Springfield educators who work each day to maintain high quality public education for all Springfield students. This evening, um, excuse me, in the last two years, in addition to their many other duties, Springfield teachers have implemented one-to-one -one technology in their classrooms in a shorter period of time than any other district in the state. They have moved away from the use of textbooks in favor of online applications and teaching materials and have moved out from behind their desks in order to monitor flexible learning spaces. They have embraced new technology and given up tools they have trusted to do the good work that they do every day. 
Springfield educators have implemented a vast network of programming and classroom innovations to create opportunities for their students. They use their plan time and professional development for collaborative learning, blended learning, and other building initiatives. They remain professional, positive, and focused on students' access to quality public education. Through launch, Springfield highly qualified Missouri and DESE certified teachers and adjunct educators have made possible the opportunity to preserve public education and create new opportunities for the southwest region of the state. These professional and passionate Springfield educators continue to go above and beyond, keeping students central in the decisions which govern all that they do. The SPS Board of Education and Administration should recognize Springfield educators as indispensable to this district for their commitment to students and for the many accomplishments of this district that they have made possible. And so I would like to address that to the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Next speaker is Deb Olson. Good evening. Hello. My name is Debbie Olson, and I discovered yesterday on your website that you are considering uh, several different companies for substitute teaching. And I have had the pleasure of subbing in Springfield schools since I retired. I know after the 34 years I taught, one of my biggest concerns was getting qualified teachers to come, substitutes to come in when I was gone. Um, I know that you've gone through a process, you've listened to presentations, and you know a whole lot more about this than I do. But I also feel like it would, it would do my heart good, if nothing else, to let you know a few reasons why I think this system and the Kelly services that I work for uh, is great. Let me, let me say I'm here representing myself um, because my passion is teaching and I'm very thankful I've been able to have both retirement and teaching at the same time. When I trained for Kelly, one of the most important things I heard them say is, do not take a job that you are not qualified to teach. If you can't teach math, don't take a math job. If you can't teach English, don't take an English job. And I immediately thought, wow. Um, they actually were saying, you know, when you go to the classroom, you will teach. And that impressed me tremendously um, because it is kind of a um, just a take what comes in the room, you know, when you're when you're teaching, uh, and you never quite know what to expect. So I was very impressed with that. I was impressed with their professionalism. You'll be dressed professionally. If you have a free period, you need to ask for uh, if there's anything you can help with. So um, that is something that really impressed me. I also was impressed with the fact that the first time I got a thank you, as a group, we received thank you saying, um, good job, good job, Sebs. We filled 450 positions on Friday. And as a sub individually, I don't know that, but their communication is great. We already have um, a message from them that um, March 12th, uh, May 12th, is projected to be a busy sub day so if we can prioritize what we're doing and work so i feel like their organization is outstanding um, and i think one other thing just as a sub in your schools that i see that i'm not sure maybe it may not even be something that you've thought about um, i see for the past two years absolutely wonderful new innovative programs that are being implemented in your school. And I see that's change. And even change in a good way still creates so much stress and so much extra time needed for the staff that, you know, when I read that you were considering changing, I thought, with all of the other changes, when you have a system that works, that's good, that's there, why throw one more thing in the mix that would involve administrators, teachers, paras, uh, administrative professionals to try to grasp a whole new system, including me as a sub. So I just felt that it was something that I needed to 
speak about. I feel very passionately about teaching and I love what I do and uh, your schools are fabulous. I did not retire from Springfield schools, but I am so glad that I um, have had this opportunity to work at some of the schools that several uh, great kids, great staff, they're embracing everything and and so are we. I mean, I've been embracing Chromebooks. So <laughs> I appreciate that and the students are uh, moving in the right direction. I just am concerned about one more thing that's already working for everybody to have to embrace. So I thank you. I thank you for your time and for your consideration. Um, I am um, very impressed with Springfield Schools and what we're working on now. And again, I'm, I've been impressed with Kelly Services because I cannot imagine uh, needing 350 teachers at a time. So thank you. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions for you if you can do that now. No, I'm not supposed to. Okay, never mind. Like for a minute, I thought I was on Shark Tank, I guess. I don't know. So, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Melody Tomlinson. Good evening, I'm Melody Tomlinson. I am district manager with Kelly Services. Um, as your substitute staffing partner for the past 10 years, Kelly Educational Staffing is proud of the impact we make on students K through 12 education. Kelly Educational Staffing is a lower cost supplier highest ranked technical for the purchasing evaluation results and a trusted partner of Springfield Public Schools for over 10 years with a consistent 99% fill rate over that period. Kelly Educational Staffing has been honored and proud to have had the opportunity to serve Springfield. I thank you for your time. Our final speaker is Jeannie McCleary. Yes, you oh, did. Awesome. You did great. Got one. Hi, I'm Jeannie McCleary, as he stated already. I'm actually here to read a letter from a substitute of Kelly Educational Staffing. She regrets that she was not able to be here. It's Miss Donna um, Citron. And she wrote, I have been a substitute for Springfield Public Schools since 2003. In 2007 and 8 school year, Kelly Educational Staffing took over the assigning substitute for Springfield Public Schools, which was no easy task, as the Springfield Public School District is the largest accredited district in the state and growing. In the past 10 years, Kelly Educational Staffing, part of an international corporation providing temporary staffing needs worldwide, has met the often time daunting job of filling ever increasing demand for substitutes who meet the high standard of the Missouri Department of Education as well as stringent background checks. Kelly is Kelly provides its clients and employees with the most modern technology and training available, continually updating and achieving maximum performance. From a personal experience, I know that Kelly also provides its employees job-specific job training in many areas so that each employee can reach their full potential in order to better service the needs of the district. They also make available variety of benefits for employees to purchase, plus perks through many of their worldwide partners. Their employment numbers have very positively impacted the, Springfield, uh, the city of Springfield. She brings up that the recommended provider is, a, in, is in scope small in comparison with branches in only seven states. While I'm certain it is professional operation, it cannot offer what both the Springfield School District staff and its substitutes have come to expect from Kelly in all areas necessary in the request to service over 25,000 students in their district. For the benefit of all, please keep Kelly Educational Staffing as the provider for substitutes in the Springfield District and keep up, keep up their excellent record of service. And that is a thank you from Welladonna Cetron. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for all the speakers. <coughs> Moving on. Let's get organized here. Uh, item 3.1, 3.01, informational reports, we have none uh, for tonight. And moving on to item 4, 4.01, contracts, agreements, bids, and change orders. And I'll give time if, if everyone wants to stay or leave. Like Jill said, it gets better. <laughs> Is that what I said? No, I didn't say that. Okay. Fair Good evening. Enough. We have posted for you 28 separate items under contracts bids, agreements, and change orders. And these, as always, are provided to you for first read, and then at the May 23rd meeting, we would be seeking approval for them. If you have any questions about anything specific, I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, it's quite the plethora among these agreements, include the construction team's work and also preparation for Explore, as well as some other uh, individual items to support nutrition services and um, go camps. We do have the uh, one primary one is the exclusive beverage service uh, contract that's been out for RFP and a comprehensive cross-divisional team has been reviewing that. So we'll be bringing that forward for your uh, approval May 23rd as well. So. Questions for Carol? I have noticed we've had a, we had a lot the last time. A lot. Is that just the end of the year? It's, or it's just, the cycle. Just the cycle. Mm -hmm. the ending. We, we do try to have our agreements run a July 1 through yeah. June 30 to mirror our fiscal year. And okay, so that, that causes a number of them to be renewed at this time. Yeah. Okay. No other comments? Okay. Uh, just one comment. It was to my heart good to see uh, 40 members of the Kickapoo Central Parkview Glendale <coughs> speech and debate team. Yes. Yes, we have celebrations embedded within these agreements <laughs> as well. And again, some of them are simply notifications for you. Uh, the funding source may uh, be a partnership or fundraiser uh, opportunities, but um, anything that hits that threshold, we try to provide you as well as memorandums of understanding. Okay. Questions? Okay. We Thank will you. vote on those uh, May 23rd. Yeah. Next item, item 5.01, board policy. We have several policies listed for first reading. Any questions? If anybody has questions to refer to the staff or if anybody's got questions now about any of those. Most of them deal with uh, HR stuff, and so Lisa's here if you have any questions. Any time over the next two weeks, feel free to reach out and follow up. These are all MSBA. Some of them are uh, their MSBA policies, but they're local revisions. Yeah. So. <coughs> but even with local revisions, they're yep. real reviewed by MSBA to exactly make right. sure they're uh, consistent. So you got it. So they meet statutory yeah. requirements. Okay. With that, we will, as normal, we will vote on those on May 23rd. New business. There is no new business. Unfinished business. Item 7.01, substitute services. Carol. Okay, so I will highlight for you that I did just update uh, the posting information with regard to uh, the recommendation. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm taking on something here. Can I know, you tell? I can hear. Uh, so before you, we we did post this at the last board meeting, and it is posted this evening for your approval consideration. And that is a request for proposal was issued for substitute employment services on March 10th, 2017. Responses were due April 7. We did receive seven responses from, uh, from the various firms and those were reviewed by an, a committee that was formed and the committee was comprised of myself and uh, Lisa Turner, our Chief Human Resources Officer, served in an advisory capacity and worked with the conference team to develop out the RFP. And then beyond that, our Director of Information Technology, Human Resources Manager, Benefits Specialist, and an Application Specialist also participated through the review process. There were four vendors who were selected for uh, presentations to the committee. And ultimately, the committee <coughs> recommends PenMax Staffing Services Incorporated to provide Substitute services for a three-year contract subject to annual review. The savings over the current year contract 
with Kelly Services is estimated to be 103,273 in year one, 113,495,000 in year two, and 102,159 in year three. And that includes the reduction for the direct purchase of the software licensure to um, provide for that avenue. Uh, under contracts, agreements, change orders, and bids, listed for your consideration and approval at the May 23rd meeting is the ASOP Frontline Software. That is the same company that provides the software through Kelly Services as well. Uh, so this does include that reduction for the software. Absent the reduction for the software, it would be 149674 145895 and 134559 <clears throat> So, I can uh, provide you with other information if you're interested, or I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Questions for Carol? Charles? Yes. While they may not have been on the committee, did the committee solicit input from the people closest, sort of the, the teachers, the principals, et cetera, who have benefited you know, from, from the services? We did not go th through that process, and I will, I'll help you understand why. Uh, our perception with regard to how we provide this service is something that needs to fly under the radar and absent any um, engagement with our leaders in the buildings. We want them to be able to focus on the learner. What we will do through an implementation process is include them, and actually I had a conversation with Dr. Anderson about that, uh, that we would include them on a team to collaborate and determine what, is, what would the needs be within the buildings. We reviewed the response based on the technical pieces of the RFP. Um, it included, <clears throat> excuse me, recommended the RFP award indicated that it would be recommended based on the technical presentation meeting the RFP criteria, the oral presentation and including organization and history, workflow and process, training for substitutes and support staffs, communication and the recruiting plan, and then of course price was included in that as well. Other questions? Can you tell us who was on the committee? Uh, the, beyond the positions? Yeah. Okay, so Lisa Turner and myself, Bruce Douglas, uh, Kim Mulvaney, I didn't mention her before, Director of Finance Kim Mulvaney was on there, uh, um, Melanie Simpson, and Kim Surratt, and Andy. Help. Andy. Andy. Nelson. Nelson, Nelson, thank you. <laughs> Andy Nelson. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had the position titles, but not the names. <clears throat> if, um, if we have the software, if we have access to the mm -hmm. software that we then own it, can you talk a little bit about what that enables us to do that we cannot presently do? Sure. So currently, when we need information, data, with regard to Kelly Services reporting, we contact them to obtain that information. And this would enable us to directly access and produce our own reports and um, provide us additional information beyond that, or a more readily available information. Uh, I'm looking at when we constructed the RFP, we asked Kelly to provide us with the, some data from FY16 so that we would have a, have a comprehensive set of data. So the additional positions listed and on which pricing has been provided uh, includes assistant principal and assistant to the principal, the paraprofessional or classroom name, speech language pathologist at an hourly basis, interpreter, substitute secretary, library clerical, uh, in addition to, of course, substitute teachers, which is the primary. So, and I think the thing that um, that I want to be clear on, and I want a little more information from you, is just that the capacity, I mean, that's a lot of different positions, and it requires a lot of coordination in the calling, the placing, the collecting the data, the, and the training piece, which you indicated was a part of the RFP, how that training, 
So obviously, and I'm not second guessing the committee, but I just want to make sure that I'm clear that that um, uh, computer keeps uh, <laughs> but um, that who you are. Um, uh, yeah, PinMap, that's your right to, they have the capacity to handle an extra size. I mean, that's a big question I know, right. and, and you can make a little more comfortable. Uh, and I'll invite uh, Lisa Turner to join me if she would uh, care to do that. But all indication to the committee uh, was that they, they believe there will be no issues at all in being able to reach our needs. Uh, the agreement would go into effect August 1, so there would be a window of time uh, to work toward that end in, in preparing, which is why we um, had it at a um, off cycle in terms of the vote, asking for you to vote this evening. <clears throat> Any questions? Um, I just got one I tell. Yeah. I'm trying to think how to ask it. So um, we see it from this angle in terms of all the different criteria and cost is one that you've outlined here. But I guess, um, do we know what how pay looks differently for what? one company has paid you mean to the receiver yes the person subbing yes do you uh, anticipate the there being a no. change in what and that is something that, Does that the, make sense? the district sets that price point okay and so, we so the provided, company doesn't right and okay. so that we could do an apples to apples comparison we provided data regarding number of absences for a fiscal year the price for each of the roles okay. each of the positions uh, again so that not only could we compare it but that was that's part of that communication okay. and we have we don't have any expectation that that would change okay. at this time no questions I, I, I have one just it's mechanic it's more mechanical it says it's a three-year contract subject to annual re review is that the same as a one-year contract with two extensions it's actually or is that I mean I, I'm, I'm it's semantics I'm just, right is it which, which, which is it? right it is actually, it is a three-year contract subject to annual review as indicated. And so the interpretation of that would mean that uh, in the event that there were any challenges that naturally there would need to be communication uh, along the way, but then there would be uh, notification provided. So it was about it would require an, an issue rather than right. an extension. Is that what you're saying? I mean, Correct. It would be a performance issue rather than just a timing. That's that's my interpretation. Okay. All right. Well, I'm curious about the semantics. That... Okay. Any other questions for Carol? No. Bruce? Just to say that this has been bid before. It was bid in 2012. So we yeah. have been with Kelly since 2007, yeah. and it was bid in um, 2012. There were two companies who responded and the bid was awarded again to Kelly at that time. Okay. So they were on a five-year contract this last time? They were on a five-year contract? It's had annual renewals okay. occurring and it had it had the ability to continue with right. renewals. Yeah, which, which is, is different. This, than that's what different this is. than what we got now. From my perception, yes. Okay, that mine too. That's what. Okay. Any other questions or comments? And we do need to take action tonight. Yes. On on that. So the recommended action that we have is that the board approves the superintendent to designee to sign a contract authorizing Pinmax Staffing Services Inc. as a third-party service provider for substitute services. I would entertain a motion. So moved. Bruce? Have a second? Second. Jill? No opportunity to vote. Thank you. There you go. Took a minute.
motion carried. Okay. Moving on to item 7.02, budget development, purchase services. Ms. Ember, you're back up. I'm realizing <laughs> I didn't post my PowerPoint. I did not, so we'll go through it on on board docs. This happened to me one time before. How do I open? I need a technology assistant, please. <laughs> Somebody in the house? Maybe Ren. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I did not post my PowerPoint. <laughs> Yeah, no, I need to just pull up. It's posted within board docs. So do I just go up here? No. Uh, oh, here. Yeah. I have to go back. Oh. Okay. I apologize. Go to the SPS. Oh, that is not what I was trying to do. Let's watch that. It is in the public session. Can I just back space? Yeah, just a minute. Okay. Touch me in the public. Okay. It is posted. It'll go, it'll go right there if I. You can do it through public site. I think. It usually, no, it won't work for me. Okay, I apologize. Okay. Let me see if we can do it this way. We'll do it the old fashioned way. And agendas. And there we go. <laughs> okay. I apologize. I've switched, I've switched to PowerPoint, so I can't just log on to Prezi anymore, and my brain has not retrained on that. Okay. So, so just bear with me. Okay, this evening we are talking about budget development and with specific focus on purchase services and supplies. Again, remind you of the funds that are managed by SPS, and this is part of the general fund or funds <clears throat> 10, 50, and 60 primarily. This is our budget development timeline. Shows you tonight is purchase services and supplies, and then on May 23rd, we'll talk about current year salary and benefits in preparation for the budget presentation on June 6th. Our objectives this evening include <clears throat> Uh, sharing the fund components, the fund sources, the types of expenditures, salary and benefit information, which is basically a reference to when we'll talk about it, and then the primary purchase service areas and supply areas. So here's a visual that helps you understand that when we talk about operating funds, <laughs> I'm kind of getting scratchy, aren't I? It's not good. <clears throat> uh, operating funds are made up of the general fund and the teacher fund. And then as sub-funds of the general fund, we have the food service fund and also student activity funds. So operating fund sources include obviously the carryover fund balance, which is the annual routine. We have local and county revenues and state revenues, federal revenues and others. So pretty much any, any resource can be attributed to the operating fund. And as a reminder, revenue details will be provided to you at that June 6th meeting as well. <clears throat> Hopefully by then we will have some great information from the state. So this shows you a breakdown of the operating fund expenditure types. And you can see that our salary and benefits runs typically close to that 80% when you combine benefits with salaries. Purchase services runs at, at around 9% of our overall budget and then supplies 12% of the operating funds. So there's that reminder that we'll talk about salary and benefits, that large section of general revenue. So this shows you now the, the slice of the pie when we take a look at overall operating funds, how much is representing supplies and how much is purchase services. So in the current year, 
The supply budget is approximately $31.7 million, and the purchase service budget is approximately $22.4 million. That's where we get that 12 and that 9%. And then if we unpack those a little bit more, you can see that for purchase services, the support services section, and this is relative to coding that's required by the state of Missouri. So remember when we've talked about the annual secretary of the board report or ASBR, uh, when the auditor spoke and we posted that for your approval, uh, this breaks that down. So from an instructional perspective, 31%, support services, 67%, and then community services is 2%. The supply budget is broken into 40% instructional, 57% support services, and then 3% community services. And as a reminder for you, when we talk about some of the support services that are wraparound services for the classroom, that would include even uh, if it's a, a counselor who is uh, purchasing supplies, then that would be part of support services. The fuel in our buses, the um, the food in the cafeterias, those fall under support services uh, within the coding structure of the general ledger. <clears throat> Are there any questions about any of that so far? Just keep on moving. Feel free to uh -huh. ask. This is just to provide you context with the magnitude of what it takes to build the budget. So we have in excess of 20,000 active expenditure codes. Now, purchase services represents 2,737, supply codes 1,196. 19% uh, of our active codes are for purchase services and supplies, and the remaining are for those salary and benefit costs. There's a lot of work that goes into building the budget behind the scenes, and then lots of layers of people engaged through that process. So this slide shows you the primary purchase services by object code category, and again, this is taking another slice view that would also be available through looking at the ASBR report that is posted each year. And also, each month, we're providing you with financial reports that provide you the same view on these codes. So for professional and technical services, our budget is approximately 4,866, or 21 percent of all purchase services. And substitute services is just under the $4 million mark, and that's comprehensive of not only the daily rate that gets paid out to uh, the employee who shows up to do the substitute service, but also the markup um, that, um, for instance, what that was just approved. Currently, we're at a 35% markup, and next year it will move to a 29.1% markup uh, with the new agreement. <coughs> So the uh, training, extracurricular activities, and supervision, that, and that also includes uh, travel within that too, but there are a variety of costs that get coded there, and that also can include um, professional development that comes from the Professional Development Committee, which utilizes our 1% funds provided by the state. So that's 2,386,000, or 11%. And then purchase instructional services, 1,787,200. And again, a variety of tuition can be posted there. Um, we have very specific guidelines from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education School Finance Department with regard to how we code our expenditures or our revenues in the system. So a reminder for you, professional technical can be any work that's performed by non-employees, and that's why uh, we do have that sub-services line in there. So if you were to compare our district to other districts that uh, have that in-house, their salary and benefits would be higher. The percentage would run higher because we would be directly paying them. <clears throat> so again, contracted athletic officials, snow removal, mowing, all those things. We do contract out still the management for nutrition services, and so that is coded under professional technical. This shows you, again, purchase services and professional services from a function perspective. And so now you can see that 44% is, is instructional. <clears throat> it's kind of running off there. Uh, we have technology 3%, transportation 2%, grounds 5%, building maintenance 10%. And then there are a number of other categories that are lumped together in this 35% section. Nutrition services is 1% of that total. Uh, this, uh, again, references the substitute services where those are directly charged to a purchase service code. 
for training, extracurricular activities, and supervision. That can include student transportation, activities, student activities, and the professional development of staff. <clears throat> and this shows you that function view uh, from a coding perspective of the training piece. So again, you can see that significant pieces support instruction directly or as um, indirect or wraparound services for instruction. So I mentioned before tuition, um, I did not mention that local tax effort uh, that we're required to pay per statute. If students are attending in another area, there is a local tax effort billing that occurs and that's typically with regard to our students with special needs. So if we look at supplies, we have general supplies at just over 17 million. Food supplies, 5,880. Utilities, 5,164. And gas and diesel, 732,000. With books and that type of purchase item, 1,233. And this again is the current year budget. This shows you a visual of uh, that breakdown. You can see 57% are supplies, 20% food supplies. Utility 17%. <clears throat> That'd be city utilities. Utilities. This one, just so you know. Ah, she's, yeah. she's on theme. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Uh, nice work, Embry. So, <laughs> so supplies do include <clears throat> warehouse supplies for classrooms and offices. Uh, that would include technology. I mentioned the, the food before, so, and then non-food, I'm sorry, non-food goes to general supplies. So non-food could be napkins, and if we use any disposable wear, that type of thing. <clears throat> and then uh, supplies used for repairs by staff. So our maintenance crew, when they go out into our buildings to fix things, they purchase supplies that way. This shows you a uh, function view of the supply breakdown, so you can see uh, instruction 35%, nutrition services 21%, building maintenance 22%. None of those are surprising and they, they stay pretty consistent from year to year. So that is it on purchase services and supplies. Do you have any questions for me? Question for Carol. Yeah. Um, a few slides back you said that books yes. is a million, about a million and a quarter. <clears throat> Um, is that all curriculum, basically, or is that literally books? I would say it's a combination. Uh, and I will tell you, back in the day, I'm real old school here, we actually had a specific revenue stream from the state that required us to code textbooks. And we had free text revenue. Do you, uh, John, are you nodding your head? <laughs> you remember that? I've heard of it. I think it went away in the 80s. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think it went away in the 80s. <laughs> but a lot, of, so when um, Dr. Pilly comes before you and provides you with the new, um, yes, the new the plan, a lot, she's spending a lot of that money, yes. Would it also include library books, that sort of thing? Oh, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Any other indeed. questions for Carol? I had one on, on the extracurricular, talking about student transportation. Mm -hmm. Is that contracted transportation? <clears throat> is that our buses? Is that part of the transportation funding that we get from the state? Is that covered right. in that? Or is that... Are you talking about the purchase service training, section? Training, extracurricular activities, uh -huh. and supervision. Okay. You said student transportation. Right. And I didn't know if that was if that was let's see what our I buses or is that contracting out with <laughs> right. Greyhound to take it somewhere or, or No, what I would say to you in, in that regard, are you talking about this two percent slice right here? I or have no idea. Maybe it's up it in the grid. Right there, right. Yeah, that's a slide. Yeah, it is right there. Sorry, I don't student mean to make you dizzy. Yes. So yeah, so there could be some contracted out student transportation uh, okay. that would appear in the purchase services area. Um, and, and we do that sometimes because we, right. quite frankly, don't have enough buses right. to run the trips that are required uh, when activities are taking place and regular routes need to take place. Uh, so definitely we would outsource at times and it would be coded as purchases. And I'm assuming that's not covered under 
state funding reimbursable Not, because it's outside of right. It has to be day. approved yeah. routes. Or routes. Or go to school and go. Mm -hmm. okay, that's what I thought. I, right. Yeah. All the other stuff is. On but this us. could be yeah. labor. Our own bus drivers it could be contract or not no uh, no those it's strictly contract it would strictly be contracted okay. and this could also I mean there could be within the purchase services for transportation the two percent in total that could also include if we need to pay another company to rebuild an engine uh, for repairing that type okay. of thing where we wouldn't okay. our own labor wouldn't right. make the uh, changes okay. Gotcha. Okay. good Any questions, questions? Yeah. Carol Okay. All right. Well, we survived with me not posting my thing. Okay. All right. Well, what all did I open up? There we go. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Uh, moving on to item eight, public comments to address non-agenda items. We do have one. Uh, speaker tonight. Uh, I would like, also like to uh, remind the speakers that we allow, allow comments that are related, not related to agenda items. These will be limited to three minutes uh, for each speaker and will be timed once again by the, the board. Just watch the boards. Uh, I'll say it again. It's inappropriate to address the board about uh, individual students or individual staff members by name in open meeting. If you have concerns about individuals, these concerns should be addressed through the appropriate administrative supervisors, either in the schools or in the district office. And our speaker is Melissa Albright. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, board. Good evening, Dr. Jungman, Dr. Dawson, other administrators, teachers, educators, and community members. I am Melissa Albright, and I am a fifth grade English language arts social studies teacher at Wilson's Creek School, and I also am a nationally board certified teacher. I am one of 15 national board certified teachers from across the nation that has been elected to represent um, teachers on the National Board of Professional Teaching Standards Board of Directors. I am one of 112,000 teachers from across the United States that have seeked this advanced certification. I am one of 947 Missouri teachers who have achieved National Board Certification and one of six educators here in the Springfield Public Schools that have achieved National Board Certification. This has been the single greatest professional development of, uh, that I have done in my 28 years of teaching. I have masters, a specialist, a doctor, but this is the one thing that has directly impacted my, my relationship with students and with my own education. The founding mission of National Board of Professional Teaching Standards is the, uh, to advance the quality of teaching and learning by maintaining high and rigorous standards for what accomplished teachers should be able to do and what teachers should know. As we all know, teachers directly impact students and student learning. And this is illustrated in the five core propositions of the National Board. Teachers are committed to students and their learning. Teachers know the subject they teach and how to teach those subjects to students. Teachers are responsible for managing and monitoring student learning. Teachers think systematically about their practice and learn from experience. And teachers are members of learning communities. I would like to present each of you with the newly revised book, What Teachers Should Know and Be Able to Do, that was just released by the National Board Professional Teaching Standards. I have attached my business card in case you would like to know more about the process or have sit down and talk with me about what a great um, achievement this is. And also let you know that on June 19th at the uh, Springfield NEA office from 1.30 to 4.30, we are gonna have an informational meeting and we are hoping that we can encourage all of our teachers here in Springfield and in surrounding areas to attend that workshop. Thank you so much for recognizing the accomplishment of those teachers earning National Board certification with a stipend, and it is our hope that we can have more teachers go through this process and achieve this great certification. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Perfect. Okay. Moving on to uh, item nine, strategic discussion. Uh, 9.01, focus area three. Carol, this is your night. And this encore. Usually is. <laughs> I, I do, you know, resolve or reside in the business side of the house, so that's all right. And I would like to thank Ren, who is the wizard behind the curtain for us, running technology, for posting my presentation. <laughs> I should have asked her to post the other one. <laughs> so. And not only posting it, but she does a lot of work to support us through this, so thank you, Ren. Okay, so this evening is... Is this my mid-year report? It's my spring report. Okay. It's my spring report on focus area three, financial sustainability and operational efficiency. And so uh, we're highlighting for you this evening some of our progress that we've actually celebrated along the way through board meetings uh, because I do have the opportunity to engage with you and talk with you about the work that we're doing. Uh, this slide shows us uh, strategy 3.1.1 where we're talking about maximizing revenue from state, local, and government sources. And we've talked about the fact that really fitting within this area also is reducing expenditures and controlling costs, which we spend a significant amount of time doing as we do new reviews of contracts and, and do RFPs and uh, seek better pricing. So this highlights the celebration of MedTrax and Mercy, where we have a 1.5 million uh, savings through negotiated contracts for health and pharmacy benefits. And a reminder for you that that agreement with Mercy that we uh, entered into back in 2015, it's resulted in a 12.8% per capita per capita medical expense savings. That equals a 1.2 million in claims expense savings, and we shared that with Mercy. And so there's 600,000 for us. This has uh, provided a continued stabilization of the Health Benefit Trust Fund for us. And um, that again was the result of a negotiated contract that occurred <coughs> at that time. The second item to highlight is the recent pharmacy uh, renewal rene uh, negotiation. And I'd like to express thanks. Uh, of course, I partner with Lisa Turner through much of this work, and so through her efforts as well. And we would both want to acknowledge J.W. Terrell, our new broker, for all that they do for us. They have um, delivered significant um, energy to the process. and been very much a partner in negotiating on these prices. So that negotiated savings is an estimated, we thought originally it would be a $600,000 savings, it's uh, estimated at this point to be a $900,000 savings and of course that's looking at historical data. And that, that is provided to our employees with no plan design changes and that's the most important celebration to highlight too. That uh, not only have we been able to, through these savings, not only have we been able to continue with no plan design changes for our employees uh, and their families to enjoy, but we've also been able to stabilize the fund and not increase the expenditures that are attributed to our operating funds. So, sure. huge celebration. Who sure. was our broker before? Gallagher. Okay, just on this? We were with Gallagher for all of our health. Uh, okay. okay. And now the new one, <clears throat> again, is? J.W. Terrell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we did an RFP uh, a couple of years ago okay. for broker services. Okay. So, moving forward, the we next area. Can just stop for another minute? I I'm sorry? I wonder if there's any other employer who can say what you just said. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm astonished. Yeah. So I found words while my friends over here. I mean, <laughs> that's a really big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. It's a, I mean, I know we're excited yeah. about the savings, but to have done that with uh, yeah, not making any version. changes for our employees, that's really impressive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Again, it is definitely a partnership and uh, a lot of people pulling uh, to make that happen. So it's been a good thing. Okay, shall I move forward? <coughs> but thank you for the pause. That was good. That was. A good I, I just wanted to stop to say that. So yes. <coughs> that was cool. That's right. For the people and we're here for. What I didn't say on the health benefit is. That's during a time when a number of other entities are seeing increases. That's that was my point. Yes, I, I don't know who else can mm -hmm. say that. Right, and I'm really glad we achieved that for our employees. Thank you. Okay, so moving on, uh, now we'll highlight strategy 3.1.3, and 
this is the one that gets me most excited, I have to say. The, the money's really good, okay, don't get me wrong. But I'm super excited when we are able to affect change and make someone's work world better and more efficient. And so this, again, is that research and implement best practices for process improvement and create collaborative multi-divisional teams focused on operational efficiency. I don't know if he's behind me, but Bruce Douglas is the guy uh, who really drives this effort. And he is our director of in informational technology and does a phenomenal job. <clears throat> He's, he's one of those very unique people that he gets, he can do spreadsheets, he can do programming, he can, he can do it all, so. Uh, but he gets workflow, and that's what really matters. So the work that we've been doing, the highlights for you this evening, the Muni software, we have worked really, really hard to affect change in that area. We still have a long way to go, but our first stop was to uh, do an investment review of that to um, determine what we need to do to make things better. The Operation Unify continues and I've uh, got some recommendations that have come forward and then also from a process improvement perspective we consider that the internal work that BKD is doing and providing uh, to you their uh, draft reports and, and um, final reports which we will be posting that uh, athletic audit. We'll plan to post that for the May 23rd approval. Um, that also helps us get better. <clears throat> so with regard to the Munis software investment, uh, what we've done is we have um, we've shifted some responsibilities around to free up one particular employee in the finance department to be a project leader collaborating with Bruce Douglas, and then also on, that's out of the finance payroll side, and then uh, from the HR side, uh, we have a human resources manager who does a phenomenal job and understands process improvement and that type of thing too, and so they are working hard every day, and actually uh, we have members at a um, conference this evening, uh, or this week rather, learning more about the software. So. We're being very thorough because we need to understand how can we make this so Yes, please. Uh, regarding Munis, this is a, a software that the district has had for a number of years. Right, correct? like a decade, I think. And have, have you had any experience with Munis before? I, I had not, and as I understand, it's more common in municipalities, thus the name Munis. It is a Tyler Technologies product. And in my conversation with Dr. Jungman, it, we, we know we have challenges and opportunities for improvement. And so before we would ever consider, do we need to change software, we need to know that we are utilizing this software to its fullest capacity. I was going to say, my guess is it's really robust. It is. Highly complex, and that you've got to put a lot into it to get a lot out. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Most, most uh, enterprise <coughs> software like this mm -hmm. is that way. Right. And it's probably a bit expensive. Yes. And, and yes, for us to take on a software replacement would be mm -hmm. a very costly and time consuming endeavor. And so we, we cannot misstep in terms of ensuring that we are utilizing this to its so fullest what you're capacity. What we're trying to do is get deeper into mm -hmm. it and get the kind That's of like right. using a percentage of the brain. You That's right. Using a percentage of the brain. Exactly. That's a great. Great analogy, yeah. So, it, so it's a lot of heavy lifting, and in the meantime, we need to continue to crank out accounts payable and uh, payroll once a month, and get people hired, and all those moving parts that are occurring. So uh, that's why it it does take somebody like Bruce Douglas as our uh, team leader to keep pushing the rope and uh, help us get where we. I use that expression a lot. You do? Uh, Did you I, make it up? I don't know. I've used it for years. No. It's not necessarily complimentary. <laughs> I'm pushing rope here, people. Work with me. You know? All right. I, I'm, I now see the. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you mentioned. Herding cats would be another. Yeah. Yeah. So jellyfish, but, is mine, and, but I yeah. hear you. And I, I want to make sure that no one, you know, takes from that comment anything bad. The, the team members. It. The team members. They are all in to help with this improvement process. And so it's been great. It's, it's heavy lifting, but it's been great. And it actually helps us form a tighter team, you know, through it. So <clears throat> it's been a good thing. So here are some of the work, uh, of the accomplishments. So you know that we've uh, 
really stepped up the game in terms of the teacher hiring process, getting the pool field filled quickly, and then ensuring that we move forward with the hire of them, uh, and and providing software access. So. There be, you know, in the past, we would have a bottleneck occur because there was so much activity going on. It would be challenging for us to have new hires ready to go day one with all of the technology access that they needed. And so by backing up that train, we're able to equip them with what they need access to so they can um, really hit the ground running and do what they need to do for kids. So that's been a good thing. <clears throat> so in January and February, the team pulled together and went through an investment review, and we actually had someone from Munis or Tyler Technologies come in and worked with strictly the human resources payroll team. Lisa, you remember how many days that was? Like three days. Three days. And then also uh, worked a few days with the uh, finance team, and that included not only accounts payable and general ledger, but purchasing as well. It's That side is not as um, layered as the human resources payroll side. So the result of that is a, a recommendation list of more than 30 items. So those are opportunities for improvement that will continue to uh, determine if, if that's the right move for us. So, and I mentioned before the BKD work, uh, they are really close in terms of that risk assessment work. So they've interviewed each of you individually, they've interviewed key personnel in the system and they are going through their rubrics of identifying what is the most important for them to uh, recommend as a focus area for next year. <clears throat> so the 30 recommendations from the Munis uh, review, uh, you can see those listed here. I won't, I won't read that for you, but uh, just basically it's all about looking at workflow and do we have parameters set up appropriately within the system that enable us to access other features of the software. That's the type of review we're talking about. <clears throat> so next steps, uh, we will um, continue the work uh, with regard to the hiring process. We will uh, be identifying other ways that we can uh, provide improved process for employees. So we did have that long list to begin with and we're not finished with it. So we'll We'll keep working through it. <clears throat> and then this last one, I believe, uh, I believe it's the last one. So strategy 3.1.7, <clears throat> develop and deploy a plan to meet the equipment needs of our students and staff. I'm really excited about this one. It's not there yet, but it's in process, and the team is working on getting the data scrubbed so that it can be input into a capital forecast software module. You may have heard reference or maybe uh, remember approving software in the past, it's called School Dude, and that's what runs our work order system. The technology department uses it, the maintenance department, grounds department, uh, and even our purchasing department. And so what will occur with this is we'll be able to enter data for the age of facilities, the square feet, condition of roofs, a variety of things, and not only that, but our vehicles and our school buses and primary equipment in the district and uh, then it will be able to provide us with costing and better data in terms of building our budget each year. Then I shared with you in a previous uh, presentation that we are committed to consistently replacing buses between 7 to 10 annually and uh, <clears throat> that will help us avoid a dip when we need to uh, replace a number of them all at one time. So, or to avoid that rather. So this capital forecast software, <clears throat> now some of you may be familiar with this. I'd not heard of it before, but it uses what's called RS means. And uh, is Tim nodding? Yes, see that this is his section of the wall. So that is a, uh, a standard for government pricing and it's indicated there it's widely used by the industry and it helps with estimates to have real time estimates. And what it does is it looks at not only um, data points, but data including labor costs in the area. So it really brings it home in terms of what is it going to cost us to affect the changes needed. And we'll be more agile. So in the past, how we've gotten at this has been through this spreadsheet and that spreadsheet and this opinion and that opinion, and that will remove 
some of uh, that subjectivity and help us be better in terms of planning. Now, what I anticipate though is once we get all of our data in there, the price point to do the work that needs to be done is going to be astronomical, mm -hmm. uh, would be my expectation. And here's an example. <clears throat> So this is not using the capital forecasting module. This is just giving you some data points. So typically, when you think about a roof replacement, you look at <coughs> not only um, the age of it, but certainly the condition of it. This shows you that we have 30 plus years old roofing uh, that would require replacement of two costs based on the information we had provided to us through um, materials and labor estimates in excess of 2.4 million dollars if we were to replace all of those roofs. The 25 to 29 year range is 14 million 428 and 20 to 24 years old roofs are uh, would be a replacement of 9 million 298. Now you can see that half of that would be a renovation approach where you don't strip down and, and fully replace it but the district has over 3.7 million total square feet of roofs and approximately 1.3 million square feet of roofs exceed the recommended 20-year life cycle. So we'll need to have a strategy to address that. But at least we'll have real data so that we'll know what's before us and how we need to approach it. So now none of this takes, this information here does not take into consideration the facility master plan recommendation. And so that will affect the end result of what we're able to extract Blake from the software as well. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So the last piece, um, it's not one of the strategies, but I mentioned to you long ago that while we don't have data points to show progress improvement, it's all mostly anecdotal or opinion of people, uh, much of what we'll be relying upon would be the stakeholder satisfaction survey. And so this slide shows you some of the questions that uh, we're in the process right now of collecting and um, the uh, accountability and assessment department uh, partners with the human resources department to launch those surveys to both the staff and the community. And so you can see that uh, we're asking some questions that would provide us with information relative to how we're doing in focus area three. Do you have any questions? I love this work. I do too. <laughs> I'm just a nerd about this work <laughs> because, because uh, developing operational efficiencies and doing things that kind of get all of that stuff out of the way so we can focus on the, our primary mission right. of educating students is so important. So anytime that we can make this overhead lighter, mm -hmm. either procedurally or financially, right. whatever, anytime we can make this less of a burden on the district, mm -hmm. we, are, we are doing the right work. That, that's exactly right, and that's actually my personal mission is remove barriers so that those who are working with the teachers or the staff and the students in the buildings can focus on that. Um, and actually just today I was in a conversation with one of our principals and um, he was sharing with me that they, the Booster Club has managed to raise $20,000 towards this particular project that's needed. It's not, it's not good to have it's it's something to repair a situation and uh, he said well what do I need to do we we haven't raised quite enough money I said all you need to do is submit the work order and that's it and so you know that's so refreshing when uh, in interacting with principals because they're like oh you know they can go back to the work that they really need to do yep. with regard to kids yep. so okay. okay any questions great Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item 10, reports administration. Dr. Gentleman. Yeah, just a couple brief uh, 
things. Number one, it's great to see several of you at our retirement reception right next door before the board meeting started at four. It's great to uh, connect with several of our retirees uh, from all different kinds of positions in our system and appreciate all their service. So uh, there will be uh, lots of individual ones, but it's great to have the board kind of recognition process. So that happened tonight. Great celebration. Uh, other celebrations in the community right now, it's Give Ozarks Day. So a lot of our not-for-profits that are partnering with us, if you have not connected with them yet, I think it goes till midnight. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a 24-hour cycle, and uh, all kinds of partners that support the work of our kids are raising funds to help that mission, their missions move forward, which only support our mission. So if you haven't had a chance to hit the Go uh, Give Ozarks website, I encourage you to do so. Other things, uh, great celebrations. This is obviously graduation week, as well as time. They don't all happen this week. The uh, five high schools do, but we also have Studi uh, coming up, and we have the middle college. So we have lots of opportunities to engage with the culminating moment of what we uh, kind of come and do is send them off to the next step. So I hope you're scheduled. Uh, you should have your information to be at graduations. Remind people to show up. We'll have. Uh, big celebration starting at 5 o'clock on Thursday and working through uh, late into Friday night as well as uh, some other opportunities. So check your calendars. If you're not sure about all the dates and times, check with Kathy and she could get them looked up. So. Yep. Uh, Studies, do you guys have it? I saw that. Mike. Is it Friday? Yeah. Midday, Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Midday. And then, yeah. Then middle college is the following week, I yeah. think. And then Mill College, do you have to Did data? somebody send us something on that? I always try to. We usually get something. They send them. Yeah, it normally comes up. It comes with a little yeah. specific card. Yeah. Well, I usually get a couple of cards. I haven't seen it yet. It's the following week. It's in the evening. It's at the Galois. 17. There you go. Yeah. 17. Next to Wednesday. So. And all kinds of other celebrations that take place, but those are uh, the big ones as we hand out lots of diplomas. So look forward to uh, seeing you at all of those events as you can make it. We, we do have two car giveaways coming up also for attendance and for project graduation. So those are great celebrations also of partners that help support our mission and support our kids. So those will be both happening in the next uh, few days also. So stay tuned to the media or come out and watch if you'd like. Uh, and Kathy's got the date and times of those also. That's it from the soup update. We'll shift straight to legislative if that's okay. Yep, absolutely. No, it's just not. Yeah, so yeah, I prefer not. Uh, you know, right now, we'll knock on everything. It's been a good last two weeks, right? I mean, as we think about the celebrations of the Senate and the House passing full funding of the formula. Uh, I was actually, I thought it was a historic moment. I was in the Senate gallery when they voted 33-0 after it came through conference committee to uh, send that to the governor's desk. It starts at the House, ends at the Senate, and now it is headed that way. And hopefully uh, that gets across the finish line. Now that's the spending plan, just like a budget is always a spending plan, and now we have to execute that for, we need growth in the economy. Uh, it's based on projected revenue, but we're growing at a decent rate. Hopefully that continues and we hit that number. Uh, and there's no withholdings, but transportation and funding is, uh, transportation and fun funding and the formula funding uh, has turned out really good for us. There's only one place that we see a uh, small risk, but it's tiny for our system in the big scheme of things is the public placement fund, uh, which has been reduced a little bit. We'll take a small hit there, but uh, uh, overall funding's been good. The bigger question is all about the bills, right? So funding is over, had to be in by Friday. They made that deadline. Now it's all about the remaining bills. Uh, Senate Bill 313 has been the big one that you've been getting the most updates from MSBA as well as myself and sending information to our constituents to engage. And I know many of you have been engaging with our legislators. And as I was up there last week, and I think Jerry was too, we heard from them that they had heard from us, which is a good thing, and, and heard from our community. I think overall the indication is that kind of outpouring has made them rethink that pace that they were moving that with. It did not move out of committee last week. It uh, did get a passage out of rules committee this week, but it has not been turned in and turned over to fiscal oversight, which is its next step. And we are down to three days at this point, so it would have to go to fiscal oversight and then the floor. That's still very possible. Uh, so stay tuned, stay uh, alert, be prepared to engage uh, as necessary. Can certainly move, yes, and I'd, I'd say staying engaged. And 
the last week is always the uh, scariest week because this is when things move at incredible pace and bills that you thought were dead come alive and things that you're better alive die quickly and then things that you didn't expect to be tagged to minutes. something uh, there are a lot of things that are being tossed onto different bills because you just find a moving bill and you try to put your information on it at that point uh, so we have lots of people at the Capitol that monitor that from MSBA to different association uh, lobbyists that give us that information on a regular basis. I will be going up tomorrow afternoon and spend the day Thursday before graduation uh, as we get close. Uh, hopefully I won't have to make the trip back up on Friday, but uh, I think right now it looks okay. But that can change. <laughs> so stay on guard and stay uh, vigilant in the conversations. But thanks for your engagement. I think it's been productive this year. Uh, and we're in a decent spot, thanks. I think. So. Yeah. Thanks Jerry. for your update. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Too. yeah. yeah. And reminders and all right. that stuff. So that's been very helpful. It can easily slip off. You know, the emails come in abundance. But thanks for your taking time to engage. I think it's I continue to get positive feedback, and you're not the only ones. We've had our chamber engage, the supporting through the Metro Partnership around our legislative priorities, and they, uh, on a regular basis, have been engaging with our representatives and senators also. So. Just like we say, if you can get the school boards engaged across the state, you can pretty much do what you get things done. I mean, that's with that kind of clout, I mean, they get engaged. And I think we began to see that this year because they, a lot of them did. So. so stay tuned. We're down to uh, a, f a few remaining hours, but they get intense and a little unpredictable. So yeah. we'll keep you informed. I, I just want to take a second, just a minute, to say something. Because we were, we were talking about it, and we had some of our folks here that like on the T-shirts that say, I support public education. I think all of us do. We would be here with our time and effort. But I, I think that we, we don't tell you often, but I think it should be said once in a while that our, the person in our district who is the strongest advocate for public education, that spends hours and hours advocating is our superintendent. Mm -hmm. He is on the road to Jeff City every time I talk to him or I talk to him or he's on the way back. And, and so, you know, someone that, that is really, really putting the time and the energy and the effort and the passion and the... Um, desire to do what's very best for public education is sitting at the table. That's right. So some That's right. I can forget that sometimes. I just wanted to say that. I don't know if we do, sure. but thank you for saying it. It's a team effort, so keep fighting the good fight. It is worth fighting only for, right? Absolutely. <coughs> because of the fight, is that's the part of it. It's a fight. Yep. It really it is. That's it for me. Okay. Awesome. Okay, moving on to item 11, board comments. Like you want got any comments you ahead of your time. Mm -hmm. That's all right. That's Sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. good. That's good. She kicked Why it off right there. Kicked it off. That's okay. Yeah. Anything else said now? I had a big, long presentation to ask Carol about tuck pointing and to explain <laughs> that in detail. And you, I know you really won't believe this, but we've had board meetings where we talked about that in detail. And... Uh, I, I mean, it's just, I guess my point is, though, there were a number of things on those contracts that um, when people have talked about what we hadn't done for buildings, those envelope issues were always things done. Nobody will know that the tuck pointing has been done on their building. I mean, really, nobody's going to say, Oh, gosh, look at that tuck pointing. <laughs> you know, we are so glad our kids are going to a school oh, where the tuck pointing is. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 Well, now, Tim gets excited. When well, I, I know. I shouldn't say nobody. But <laughs> very few of us would notice that. All but those, those who count would Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but those things have been done for years in this district, and that's why we're still using the buildings we're doing. So when they're, I think they don't remember those things. And now it's HVAC units, which we didn't used to have, but we replaced boilers, and we looked at those roofs, and as long as the roof, but we didn't, very seldom did we have to wait till it failed. Sometimes boilers failed and we had to quick get one in, but those were done at times when there wasn't 
funds to build inside, but it protected the outside so the inside could be used. So those aren't things anybody, I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of money there. And there's a lot of money every year spent there that I just don't think people understand the enormity of the expense that goes into our district, not just because our buildings are older, because of the number of buildings that we have. So I think this new software will help us be even more efficient rather than I can see the point if it's on a spreadsheet and that person's left, nobody's got the information, which is not good. But uh, that's been done here for a long time. So I, I just, I'm, I'm, um, I'm proud of the fact we're still using those buildings. I would like to do something more, uh, but those things still have to be done no matter what. They have to be done. And we've done that and thank goodness now though we're I, even though Tim would want us to spend more time on what that is that we're not <laughs> spending a whole lot of time at the board meeting talking about some of it. they just need to be done and they have to be done to protect the inside so again people aren't displaced based on what we didn't do so um, it just reminded me of years before when we spent hours on tuck pointing, which really was not, I still is, wasn't beneficial for me then, and it's still not now, but I wish Tim could have been there That's because right. he could have added a lot more. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I lived through your tuck pointing, and one of the buildings I worked in, it was grand. It was grand. It was grand. <laughs> Any other comments or comments? I, just a couple, I don't I think Gabe mentioned it. This is National Teacher Appreciation Week. They're on. No, nobody's here. A few is here. We got a couple yes. that's still here. They made it. And they hung out till the end. Uh, you know, we all know how important what happens at the board table and all that, but we also know where the action really occurs in the classrooms and how important that is. So thank you uh, for what you do for our kids. Um, I can do that. Last I, last week I spent. Uh, one of the evenings listening to the Quest Capstone Project. Incredible presentations by some incredible kids. Uh, uh, young adults is what they were because it was so professional, so identifying problems in the community from how do we solve the parking problem or the ingress and egress at Glendale to how do we take care of uh, uh, human trafficking. And I mean, it was all over the board, and they—it wasn't just stuffed on together. They done research. I, I was incredibly impressed with the presentation. I only got to see four out of twenty, but they were pretty awesome. And uh, I would encourage you to—I know other schools have capstone project presentations and stuff. And if you get the chance to see them, go see the, these kids in action. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it's pretty incredible. Okay, any other board comments or thoughts? Upcoming meetings. John mentioned graduation Thursday and Friday. You guys didn't remember, heard about it. Uh, middle College, uh, we do have the Leadership Summit in June uh, at Tantara. Uh, looks like everybody that's going has been registered to go. Um, any other meetings you might think of besides all the graduations? See you back here in two weeks. You'll be exhausted because yeah, there's a lot of stuff between now and then. So. Mm -hmm. And the kids will be sent home at that point so, yes, for a few days. Yes. You'll get some after that. That's you right. Get it home. Freedom for them. <laughs> okay. Anything else? All right. Moving on. Plus deltas. If you got any plus deltas about the meeting tonight, please uh, put them in your sticky notes and put them on the board over there. And we do need to go into executive session, so I would entertain a motion here in just a minute before I read what that motion would be. Get it right the board meet in executive session to discuss personnel and collective bargaining matters as provided in section 61021, uh, section 3, 9, and 13 RSMO. So, so I would entertain. Second. Tim, and Lena seconds. We'll vote. Go to executive session. 
Tim. Tim and Elena. And Elena. Kathy was just taking a little nap there. <laughs> she was thinking about Tuck Boy. Tuck Boy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all are. Full yeah. oh, engagement. <laughs> we drive by every building tonight as I go home going, oh, that, yeah, that needs some Tuck Boy. <laughs> some good Tuck Boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. Do we need to adjourn or do we adjourn by going in exactly?